tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for the 40th time in their illustrious basketball history. The Kansas Jayhawks are the nation's number one team. Tonight, they put their newly minted top ranking on the line against TCU. Dave Reps and Fred for Schiller with you, and a local boy featured in our Star Watch friend. Keith Langford is from North Crowley High School right here in Fort Worth. This game was set up for him to come home. About 50 family members on hand, including his mom, Charlene Taylor, also his first basketball coach. She played at Texas Arlington. Said he didn't beat her until ninth grade. Said she had a great hook shot. She could back him down in the lane. Well, and his dad, Andre Langford, played at Texas Arlington also. He's from New York. Keith still has the New York accent, Dave. Neil Doherty, a longtime assistant at Kansas. One of the other reasons this game was set up. He told his team, play like you dance when no one's watching. He wants him to just go all out, have fun against the nation's number one team as we tip it up here in Fort Worth and the opening tip control by Aaron Miles of the Jayhawks. Now the near turnover there by Lankford. This is what we see from TCU. They're going to pressure you. It's very interesting because both teams are going to be very similar. Neil Doherty bringing that pressure defense that he learned from Roy Williams over to Fort Worth. They've got to be a little careful because if they pressure too much, Miles and Lankford have the ability to get in the lane. You saw the lineup there. Santee is their top scorer. Femi Ibakule, the only guy with really the size to match up inside against Kansas. So keep an eye on him. He is a freshman. This is the freshman J.R. Giddens, highly touted for Kansas. Now Miles going to try the three with the shot clock winding down. Can't get it in the Horn Frogs control. The ball. A really good possession that time by TCU, Dave. They could, Kansas could not get into the lane. This is Eva Kunle wearing number 12. Now Santee. This is Valson. He takes it strong to the hoop, cannot get it to go, and the rebound comes to Lakeford. Good job that time by Corey Valson attacking the basket. Lakeford for three, got it! Keith Lakeford not known for the outside shooting, but he hits that one. Well, he's got the ability to drive into the lane on anybody in the country. When he knocks down the long-range shot, that makes him even more dangerous. This is Santee. Nucleus Smith wearing number one for TCU on most all main teams in the country. Now there's a foul down low, and it's going to go against Eva Kudle. Well, he's a freshman. He's aggressive, a little bit raw, not really a solid offensive player yet. So we take a look at the Kansas lineup. We told you about Langford. First career start for the freshman J.R. Giddens. Michael Lee out six to eight weeks with a broken collarbone for team. And this is a real good opportunity for J.R. Giddens. A terrific athlete from Oklahoma. Miles patting it inside. Off the rim and out from Wade Simeon, but the rebound for the freshman Padgett. Now a three on the way from Giddens, and he hits that one. One of the and one of the things he does really well, J.R. Giddens, he's probably Kansas's best outside shooter. He'd gotten off to a one for seven start from three-point line. That bodes well. Nucleus Smith has it rejected, but they're going to call the foul. And I like and I like the way TCU has taken the ball hard to the basket early in this game. See right here, Keith Langford with the ability to knock down that outside shot. That makes him doubly dangerous. You're going to see him score in the lane in transition. And then also knocking down the three. And of course, J.R. Giddens, an exciting freshman, probably the best athlete on this Kansas club. He put on a dunk show at Midnight Madness, or I guess what they call late night with the fog in Lawrence. It was unbelievable. Had some great champs in their win over Michigan State the other night on ESPN as Nucleus Smith hits the free throw. The foul was on Lankford. Giddens, a guy of high jump, six foot ten in high school. He can get up there, but doesn't want to be known just for the dunks. He said, hey, I'm a shooter as well, and we saw a little evidence of that. He dragged his pivot foot. Good call. It's really interesting. It's almost like playing a mirror image of yourself because 
the one thing Bill Self has brought to KU that's very similar to Roy Williams style the pressure man to man defense that time TCU giving the Jayhawks a little bit of their own medicine. Now the three on the way out of the corner no good. It was Aaron Curtis with the miss there. Miles spinning into the lane. Such a good penetrator, but he has it rejected by Curtis. Now TCU wants to run. Curtis into the lane. Got it. Oh, that's a pretty move. He kept it. No one stepped in front. He was able to get all the way to the rim. So four quick points by the Horned Frogs after Kansas took this 6-0 lead. Inside Simeon, and he is going to be a tough matchup for these guys. Now, that was a great back screen that time. That freed Simeon at the basket. Remember, Simeon missed 22 games for them last year with the shoulder injury. He is back, and he is healthy. If you don't believe me, just ask Michigan State. Langford the steal. Now Giddens ahead of the pack. Back to Langford for the easy two. Well, that's what Keith Langford does very, very well. He gets out in transition. Scores find a way to score different ways. He certainly does that. Five early points for him. The open three for Smith. Nucleus Smith, not a good outside shooter. Takes it to the rack there and lays it in. He's sort of their energy guy, jack of all trades. He doesn't shoot it that well, but that time, strong move. Now a foul away from the ball, going to go against the Jayhawks. Bill Self obviously not happy with the call. Goes against Wayne Simeon. Does he get a good look at Neil Doherty? It's, a, it's been a tough 24 hours for Neil Doherty. A lot of emotions. He's recruited a lot of these Kansas players. And there's not a single player who's playing for Kansas that he didn't either coach or have at least some role in their recruitment early on. Shinwizi has a block, but it's going to stay with TCU. And we are taking a timeout. Coming up, we'll tell you about the blue blood running through both of these coaches. That is next as we continue here from Fort Worth. Back in Fort Worth, Kansas up by four early on the Horned Frogs. We told you about a tale of two coaches here. Bill Self was an assistant for one year at Kansas Final Four team under Larry Brown in the 85-86 season. As for Neil Doherty, seven years with Roy Williams right alongside the coach there you see him there building up this great program that has been to two straight final fours Dave Revson friend for Schiller with you and friend what's it like then for Bill Self to take over such a successful program it's a little tricky because they went to the final four the last two years obviously all these players were recruited by Roy Williams and Neil Doherty Bill Self successful in his own right but he's got to manage you know an awkward situation because they've got to get to know their new coach the KU players He's got to get to know them. It's been a good transition so far. He's said and done all the right things. A pair of turnovers. Chin Weezy turned it over for TCU, and then Miles gives it right back for Kansas. And Bill Self said something pretty interesting yesterday. He said, under pressure, guys tend to revert to what they know. So he said, things are okay, but then you get into these situations in practice, and they kind of say, well, you know, it worked fairly well the other way for us. Yep. Well, what it's like. It's very simple. It's almost like being a stepfather. You know, Roy Williams did such a great job here with a great coaching staff. Bill Self comes in, and he's got to be their stepfather now. And and, I, and again, he's managed expectations really well. They've lost two lottery picks, but they still have a very, very good team. Through the lane, penetrating, but unable to finish his Santee. And Kansas coming the other way. They're going to run it with Miles. Pull up in the lane. Good job that time by Aaron Miles. He took it as far as he needed to and then pulled up. First two points for Aaron Miles. It's a 12 6 Kansas lead. Smith feeds it on the baseline and they lost it out of bounds. So turnovers plaguing TCU here. Again, both teams with very good half court man to man pressure. You'd expect that and therefore you'd expect some turnovers early. 
And don't think the Kansas players don't want to play well in front of their former assistant coach, Neil Doherty. Oh, no, they made that very clear. As we see a couple substitutions, Marcus Shropshire is number 10. He comes in for TCU. Jeff Graves is 42 for Kansas. You might remember having a career game in the NCAA Tournament Championship game, the loss to Syracuse. And that's Jeff Hawkins, number one in there for KU as well. Now a turnover for the Jayhawks. But yeah, the Kansas players said, we're going to come out and we're going to show Coach Doherty just how good we are. And, you, know, you, you could even see a little bit of jitter from KU. Neil Doherty trying to establish the same type of pressure offense and defense here. That he did at Kansas under Roy Williams. Not as easy. TCU, not as much of a household name as Kansas. Become a little bit more of a household name with the football success this year. There's the block, and that's one of the things that Graves does so well. Now Miles in transition. Beautiful spin move by Aaron Miles. Again, he got in as deep as he needed to and was able to spin off the pressure. Santee tried to answer. Off glass, that was pretty. Corey Santee, one of the top guards in Conference USA. He has to give Neil Doherty offensive punch tonight from the point guard spot. Former runner-up, Mr. Basketball, the Kevin Torbert in the state of Michigan. Hawkins going to shoot the three. Can't get it to go, but Graves is there. Jeff Graves, who started a lot of games last year, especially after Wayne Simeon went down with the shoulder injury. He comes off the bench now. Adams into the game, 23 for TCU, a freshman out of Houston, very highly touted. Santee, not there, slow battling for the rebound, but it comes out to Miles. Miles for three. I'll tell you what, if they start hitting their threes, it is over, because this is a team that has liability, but they've been hitting them well early on. Aaron Miles told Neil Adorty he'd been working on his jump shot. Said he had some surprises for him. Well, Kansas three of five so far behind the arc. See right there, a lot of times when a point guard puts the ball through his legs, he uses that to get his balance to go up to shoot the three. It freezes the defender. This is a team shooting just 23% from three-point range so far this year, but you wouldn't know it from watching him so far. Again, three of five for Kansas by the arc. 0 for two for TCU. Both teams have been a little sloppy. Four turnovers on each side. Well, again, and a lot of it has to do with the pressure defense. TCU is a team with very little margin for error tonight. They want to play fast, but they don't want to play so fast that they force tough shots. And so far, they've done a nice job defensively, but they've been hurt in transition, giving up a couple threes. But where they really have to be proficient, Davis, they have to be good offensively because Kansas is going to score a lot of points. And they certainly have in the last four minutes a 13 to 4 run for the Jayhawks to open up this lead. That's Art Pierce in the game, 45 for TCU. He is a freshman out of Tyler, Texas. There you see Art Pierce. That ball's going to stay with the Horned Frogs again down by 11 early. A little trouble getting it in. Good hustle by Graves. Well, not only is this an inexperi inexperienced TCU team on the floor, they're running basically the same inbounds plays that these KU guys ran the last few years. So they're going to know a lot. K Kansas is going to know a lot about what TCU runs. And when this game was scheduled, you'd think that the opposite would have been true as well, that TCU would know a lot about what Kansas was going to do. But obviously with Bill Self, it's a different Kansas team. There are some similarities, but there are differences in terms of styles offensively. That is Neil Doherty, who is the son of the head coach. Foul on Jeff Hawkins. First foul for him. Here you take a look at the elder, Neil Doherty. And his wife, Patty, their son, a freshman. Out of Fort Worth, obviously, named the newcomer of the year last season by the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Good high school player. The same high school that Keith Lake for the ten. That's exactly right. North Crowley. Their coach Tommy Brackles here tonight. Plenty of time to shoot for TCU. 
Shropshire, they get it in the corner. Adams. Well, you look at this TCU team right now. They've got three freshmen on the floor, a sophomore, and a junior transfer. And that time, Blake Adams, one of the top high school players in Texas last year, nails the three. Now Pierce knocking it away, but Langford gets it back and converts. Well, that's what we talked about. Keith Langford is a scorer. He will find ways to do it. That time he was in the right place at the right time. Adams could make it two in a row. Simeon gets the board. And that's a freshman for you. He took a wide open shot the last time. That time that shot, he might have been feeling it, but Kansas was all over him. Nice pass by Graves, but it went off the hands of Simeon, so it's going to go to TCU. Bill Self's team up by 10 points early on. We'll talk a little bit more about the hometown hero, Keith Langford, when we return to Fort Worth. Dave Reps and Fred for Schiller back with you in Fort Worth where TCU is down by 10 to Kansas. Homecoming, as we told you, for Keith Langford. Well, Keith Langford, you know, Roy Williams got his share of McDonald's All-Americans, but Keith Langford was a late bloomer. They really didn't make the final move on offering a scholarship until September of his senior year, and it just goes to show you, here's a guy that is going to be, in my mind, Dave, he's the best underrated player in the country. Yeah, he had originally committed to Ole Miss before Kansas entered the picture. You see his family there, his brother Kevin, 4.0 student, yep. average better than 17 points per game last year, a senior right now. Yep. Here from Cal, UCLA, Marquette, so another Langford on the way to college hoops. Well, you mentioned the basketball bloodlines from the from that family. Shropshire gets fouled, and it's going to go against Langford. That's going to be number two on Keith Langford. Shropshire is a kid who transferred from Texas Tech, and he, he needs to give Neil Doherty some offensive punch. So Lankford takes his seat on the bench. Interesting kid. He writes a newspaper column in the Daily Kansan. He says the words he most liked to hear from the other students is good column. <laughs> he says it's nice to be recognized for something other than his exploits on the basketball court. Well, I had a chance to spend the first weekend of the preseason out at Kansas, and Roy Williams recruited some great people in this program. That makes taking over a program a little easier, by the way, Dave. Three out of the corner, not there by the freshman Case. The Horned Frogs coming the other way. Pierce, the big guy, stepping out, and he trades one. So Art Pierce, who is more comfortable facing the hoop, hits the three right there. Oh, well, that's another freshman. Neil Doherty building this program from the ground up. Case tries to lob it down low to Graves. It goes off his fingertips, and TCU gets it back down just seven. Well, in keeping with the Roy Williams tradition, Neil Doherty will play the other night against Tulsa. He played 11 players in the first half. Every two or three minutes, you'll see substitutions. When you play pressure offense and pressure defense, you've got to keep fresh people on the floor. He has Eva Kunle back in there. And that is a good call. Ibra Kunle stuck his right arm out to ward off Padgett, and you cannot do that. That is two fouls now on Femi Ibra Kunle. Don't forget the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports tomorrow on ESPN 7 Eastern. It's Indiana at number 16, Wake Forest. Then at 9 p.m. Eastern, number 11, Illinois, and number 10, North Carolina, also available in ESPN HD. That is Bill Self's old team against Roy Williams' new team. So some real intrigue for fans watching this game. What do you think of the odds that Roy Williams is watching this game right now in Chapel Hill? I have to believe they're relatively high. <laughs> They try to run some high-low right there to Simeon, and he stepped on the end line. TCU has done a very nice job of playing half-court pressure defense. They've gotten caught in transition a couple times, a couple open threes they gave up, but they, otherwise they've been very solid. Seventh turnover for the Jayhawks, as you saw, just five for the Horned Frogs. Valson, jump stop, kicks it back out. Now it's knocked away, so that's turnover number six and for TCU. They played too fast that time. Padgett gets fouled on the way up. Basket doesn't go, but he will go to the stripe. 
as the foul goes against Marcus Sloan. But when you turn the ball over in the half court, you don't give your team a chance to really adequately get back in transition. That time, Padgett, taking advantage of the turnover, turned and ran the court, got himself two free throws. TCU's got to slow down a little bit on offense. Shropshire tried to make the home run play, get seven points back all at once, and you can't do that against a team like Kansas. One of the things that Neil Doherty said yesterday in practice is, hey, guys, keep the lane clear and burn some clock. And that is not their typical strategy. And this is a team that wants to get up and down. But he realized, hey, we've got a talent deficit. Right. And what you have to do if you're TCU, you have to get a great shot every time down. So you probably have to be a little more cautious with the basketball than you normally would be if you're an up-tempo team playing against a team of strength of Kansas. Patrick missed the first one, but the McDonald's All-America hits the second, so his first point of the game. Padgett is very good in Kansas's high-low offense. He's a good fit. Guy who had committed and was in the fold when Roy Williams left. Bill Self able to keep all the Kansas recruits. Shropshire rattles it home. Well, that's a big look by him. He had a tough night against Tulsa, couldn't knock any down. That time, Neil Doherty needs some more of that. Now the steal, and Chinwizi gets fouled by Wayne Simeon. Second foul on Wayne Simeon, so a couple of the key cogs in foul trouble for Kansas as Lakeford and Simeon both have a pair. Well, Chudy Chinwizi's a guy that is, uh, he's in his sophomore year. He was Neil Doherty's first recruit, plays with a lot of energy, and that time he jumps the passing lane, gets the steal, and gets fouled. And Neil Doherty talked about recruiting Chinwizi. <laughs> he said he was his first recruit. He said he didn't have four chairs that matched in his office. He was too embarrassed to bring Chinwizi on campus, so he went and recruited him. And this is Chinwizi backing in right now. Has it rejected by Padgett. And the Horned Frogs temporarily kept it in, but now it's going to go to Kansas. And to finish up that story, though, Chinwizi committed without ever seeing the campus. But things are turned around here now at TCU. Doherty's got some great new facilities. Well, they've got a practice facility, $6 million, that will open in the springtime. A great crowd tonight again. This is not going to be easy in Conference USA to build this. But I was, I've been really impressed with Neil Doherty the last year and a half with his patience and knowing what has to get done to build this program. Get it, tries to get it to patch it, and he turns it over. So turnovers continue to plague the Jayhawks. Well, remember now, the Jayhawks have some young players out there now. In Giddens, Padgett, two freshmen. Hawkins, a guy that didn't play much. Hawkins going to get some added playing time with that injury we told you about to Michael Lee. Shropshire hits another one. Marcus Shropshire, two straight threes, six points down for him. And all of a sudden, we have a two-point game. We talked about being proficient in the half court, getting good looks at the basket, not forcing shots. And TCU has done a reasonably good job of that, and that's why they're within two, Dave. And Shropshire, a guy not intimidated by playing KU. He scored 13 against the Jayhawks a few years ago when he was at Texas Tech, and Roy Williams said he was one of the best freshmen they faced. Well, he did a great job of reading the screen here. You see he gets behind the screen, He's able to get his shot off and get into rhythm before Hawkins can really react. And when you play good teams, coaches talk about shooting uncontested shots and staying away from contested shots. But against good teams, you have to make semi-contested shots because Kansas is not going to give you much easy. That time, Shropshire making a pretty tough shot, but he was in rhythm, got a good look at the basket. As we told you, Shropshire, a transfer from Texas Tech. He did play one year under Bob Knight, but he yep. said he just didn't really fit into the system. He wanted to play a little bit more up-tempo in the guard play and uh, felt like TCU was a better fit for him. Well, and he's close to home now, South South Grand Prairie product. alley to Nash, another guy who's close to home. A homecoming for him as well, a native of Carrollton, a suburb of Dallas. Good teams run good plays and off the top. And that time they set up an easy lob. Santee can't get it to go. Nuclear Smith the rebound, batted away. But it comes back to Shropshire. Well, and even though you got to like Shropshire's aggressiveness there, you don't want to be speeded up by the Kansas pressure. He got a, a break right there, causing the foul. It is the second foul on Hawkins. Hawkins has two. Simeon has two. Lankford has two. It's a four-point game.
Back in Fort Worth, the newly minted number one team in the nation, the Kansas Jayhawks. On top by just four over TCU, and there you see the new ESPN USA Lake Coaches Bowl, Kansas number one, Connecticut dropping just to number four, Fran, after the loss to Georgia Tech and a convincing loss of that, and Georgia Tech nowhere to be found in the top ten. Now Georgia Tech's 15th Purdue beating a good Duke team in Alaska's 21, and I like polls because I think it creates excitement early, but I don't see why you should only drop four spots if you lose a game. I think Georgia Tech should be in the top ten right now. Purdue should be in the top ten. Well, I tend to agree with you. I mean, early on, if two teams have met head-to-head, -head, the records sure. are very similar. Uh, what's the point of the polls? No question. Juncture? No question Duke and Connecticut will be very, very good all year. But if you're not playing well early, reward the teams that are. Shropshire now the pull-up. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound, though, and then they lose it underneath. Now, the one thing, though, that is different, obviously, in college football, and there's so much talk about the BCS right now, the polls really matter in terms of right. where these teams end up. Obviously, in college basketball, it's for conversational purposes only, but still, exactly I think you've got to right. reward the teams. Yeah, te Texas is an excellent team. Stanford right now is playing good basketball. Hawkins. Oh, that's a big lift with foul trouble, with Kansas's foul trouble. Someone's got to give them offense right now. That time, Jeff Hawkins stepped up. Again, TCU's got to slow down a little bit and not try to make the great play. Santee trying to make the great play, and he does. Chin Weezy gets his first two. Corey Santee. One of only three players last year in Conference USA to be in the top ten in scoring and assists. That time, great dish off. Defense, 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 defense. Giddens. They can't leave him that open. Boy, that is a big lift. Again, he came in one for seven from three on the season. He's got two threes tonight. Now Chin Weezy again has it batted away, and it's going to stay with the Horned Frogs. And again, Marcus Shropshire has got to slow down just a little bit now. Every time he's got the ball, it's like a hot potato. You don't want a guard who keeps both teams in the game. <laughs> it's kind of that fine line, though. It seems like you hit That's a right. couple, you feel hot. No question, especially in this atmosphere. They're playing with a lot of confidence. He got away with a moving screen there. Sloan alertly lets it go into the backcourt. And TCU will reset. For those who haven't seen TCU, how different is what they're doing than what they typically do? Well, you, if, you, if you're talking about uh, the transition from Billy Tubbs to Neil Doherty, it's been somewhat night and day. Billy Tubbs didn't love to get up and down the court better defensively than people thought. Neil Doherty wants his team to be a little more under control. It's a little bit of a change of culture. Santee has now hit two in a row. Seven points for Santee. And again, TCU making a bit of a run, and it's a three-point game. Well, and he got a wide open look off the break. And you talk about playing fast in transition. A good shot if you're wide open. Nash gets two more. That was a great look by Jeremy Case, the freshman. Case, another freshman out of Oklahoma, along with Giddens. In fact, he was the leading scorer in Oklahoma two years ago in high school, and Giddens was second. Shropshire. Again, tough shot early in a shot clock. There's a fine line there between being more patient and being aggressive. Miles fouled on the way to the hoop. It's going to go against Corey Santee. That's the first on him. You know, you got to like the energy with which TCU plays, Dave. They play hard. They play aggressive. They're going to make mistakes. They turn it over. Just it's four team fouls so far for Neil Doherty's yep. team, friend. But it's a young basketball team. Hawkins trapped in the corner, and he turns it over. Well, that's the famous trap in the corner versus, versus the uh, Roy Williams-Dean Smith trap. KU practiced against that today, and they still turned it over. Valsic backing in. Cannot get it to go off glass, but he gets it back. 
Curtis, long three. Again, a shot I'm not sure they wanted to take. Hawkins. No foul called, and Hawkins gets the hoop. Well, Doherty's got to stay in there to take the charge. He backed off as, as Hawkins got to make the contact. Neil Doherty fell down a little too early. Just when TCU looks like they have a chance to take the lead in this game, Kansas comes back with a couple quick hoops. Extending the lead back out to seven. Valson into the lane, and they call the block. And don't forget the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern time. It is Indiana against number 16, Wake Forest. Then at 9 p.m. Eastern, number 11, Illinois, and number 10, North Carolina in ESPN HD. The Big Ten's never won this thing. 0-4 got off to a tough start tonight. Northwestern losing to Florida State. Is this the year the Big Ten breaks through? Well, unfortunately, that Purdue win over Duke doesn't count up in Alaska. You know, talking about transitions, Bruce Weber going through the same type of transitions that Bill Self is at Kansas. Taking over at Illinois, he's got a good club led by D. Brown, sighting point guard. D. Brown is about as fast as they come with the basketball. That foul, by the way, was on Bryant Nash, his first. 17 fouls on Kansas. So TCU in the bonus, Valson hitting them both. It's a good test for Kansas, Dave. First game on the road this year. And you see how deep TCU is now. They're in the lane. They're packing it in. The solution to beating that is hitting some threes. Kansas has done that early, but Giddens missed that one. Still the Jayhawks. Five of ten behind the arc early on. Nice spin move by Curtis. Junior college transfer from Juan Morris. He's from Dallas. His mother is my FedEx lady. <laughs> and he delivered that time. He was on time with that one. <laughs> Graves cannot get it to go, but he draws the foul. Well, she's been talking him up, hasn't she? Well, you know what? I talked to her last week. She was delivering me some videotapes. Aaron Curtis from Juan Morris played for Dale Dotson, really good coach. Neil Doherty's really happy with him. He thinks he's got to play better defense. And I told his mom, if he works as hard at his defense as you work at delivering FedEx packages, he'll be okay. There he is out of Grand Prairie, Texas. Played at South Grand Prairie High School. It's interesting, you talk about TCU, you mentioned the local, you know, the towns. 11 of these kids are from Texas. Seven of the first eight Neil Doherty recruits are from Texas. That bodes well. Graves hits one of two. He and Shropshire were high school teammates, in fact, at South Grand Prairie. So Graves gets the free throw, but it is just a four-point lead for the nation's number one team. Okay, guys, sounds good. We're looking forward to it here. We have a great game, 35-31. The number one team getting a battle, as Digger alluded to. Fran, what's going on here? How's TCU hanging around? Well, this is really tricky. you got a TCU team. Kansas is spooked a little bit because everything that TCU runs, Kansas, they know the offense. Uh, it's like playing a mirror image of yourself because Neil Doherty's system is exactly the same as most of these kids are used to. Remember, they've only been around Bill Self in practice and in games for a little bit over a month. And so what they're facing tonight with the pressure defense, with the ball movement, is a mirror image of themselves. And I think it spooked them a little bit. And of course, Kansas has go to, got to go to its bench. Young players and TCU's done a nice job of hanging around. Now Pierce, well, Pierce got fouled, and they didn't call it. No, they did not. He so got tackled from behind. They're going to give it to Kansas. Actually, it's going to stay with TCU. And Gary Patterson, the football coach here at TCU, yeah. would have been proud of that yeah, tackle. He'd, li he'd like Pierce. But you see this offense right here? Kansas knows this inbounds play. Most teams in the country call that the Kansas play. If I would have told you that TCU would be giving up 67% shooting 
shooting to Kansas as Santee misses and still be down just four with three minutes to go in the first half. You'd tell me I was crazy, wouldn't you? Except for the 10 turnovers, which has kept TCU in the game. But you're exactly right. When Kansas takes care of the ball, they've been proficient. But the pressure defense that TCU has brought, and now they go to a little bit of a zone here. And Hawkins, a near turnover there, does a good job to save it. Now Miles, good penetration, but he threw it away. Ball on the floor, and they're going to call the hell ball. So that will go to TCU. Well, Miles has always done a good job of getting into the lane, leaving his feet, and making plays. Most coaches don't like that. He gets away with it most of the time. But that time, Art Pierce with a good job of sticking his hand in the passing lane. Makes a good hustle play. Well, this is not a number that's going to make Bill Self particularly happy. 11 turnovers, just seven assists so far for the Jayhawks. Well, it's interesting. They they came into the game, 36 assists, 34 turnovers. That's not great. So they've had a tendency so far to turn a little bit in their first two games. We've seen that tonight. Good extra pass. Good shot right there out of the corner, but it just wouldn't go for Santee. Now he'll try it again. Same spot, different result. That's a great extra pass, first by Aaron Curtis, and then Chudy Chinwizi, who's not a good offensive player, had the presence of mind to kick it out to the open Corey Santee. And that is confidence when you take that shot twice in a row from the same spot. Already today, Texas Tech has fallen in the Dallas-Fort Worth area at SMU. Could the number one team of the nation be the next to go? TCU a chance to take the lead. Adams to Sloan, and they slowed up a little bit. Got to get a great shot right here. Sellout crowd coming to life here. And plenty to cheer about. Santee, TCU has the lead. David Padgett didn't show high enough, and that allowed Corey Santee to go north and south to the basket. A dozen points now for Santee. Hawkins trying to silence him, and he does. What a great shot. I'll tell Jeff you what, Hawkins. Jeff Hawkins has not been in this situation too often where he's one of the veterans out there. He's made some big plays. Jeff Hawkins now with seven points. That is his career high, friend. Well, he's always been a spot player for Kansas. A local kid from Kansas City. There you see Hawkins' foul does go against Graves. Marcus Sloan going to go to the line. It's, and it's interesting because TCU really can't score inside. So you really don't need to foul them and give them free shots at the basket. Sloan unable to convert there. Well, he came in this year as a 44% foul shooter, and he showed it right there. TCU back to a 2-3 zone, Dave. That's the second one he's thrown down. That's a great alley-oop play. They flash the center into the middle. They screen the backside forward. If you don't turn your head on defense, you never see that pass coming. Ryan Nash broke his school's triple jump record four different times. And we've seen a little bit of that athleticism here. Curtis tries to answer with a three, but can't do it. And it's going to go to the Jayhawks. Well, KU will get the last shot of the half right now. But regardless of what happens, TCU has weathered the storm, and they have done a terrific job of staying in this game. Kansas in foul trouble has had to play a lot of young players. But this crowd will send this TCU, TCU team off with a great ovation, I guarantee you. As well they should. A very impressive first half for what is a rebuilding TCU team. And this will help the rebuilding project considerably. And now Pace stepped on the sideline. So it's going to go over to TCU. And now the Horned Frogs with a chance. And how much would you wind this one down here, Fran? How long would you hold it? This is a situation where regardless of what happens, unless you get an easy layup, you do not want Kansas to have the ball anymore this half unless you score on a layup. And Santee. Kind of pulling it out. Until he wants to go one on one. Cranks up the three. Can't hit it. Chin Weezy. Oh, oh baby! Oh, my. That's the way to send him off. 
shooting Chin Weezy. You got to be smart enough to know to get the shot off quick, and he did. It was a bad look for Santee. He had to shoot over Miles, but watch Judy Chinweezy, number 30, 22. Stays alive, gets it up. They'll probably review this, but that basket is good. So the number one team in the nation finds itself in a close one here in Fort Worth. Let's go to Carl Ravage and Digger Phelps. Guys. Hi, Dave. Thank you. It said 39-36. It's either going to be 39-38 or tied at 39. It appeared to be a two-point shot, but we'll check the scoreboard in just a sec once they figure out how many points they're going to give them. Very interesting first half. They were dependent, TCU, on threes. Threes and the fact that they're playing the number one team in the right. na nation. You just don't want to be number one. Uh, this is where Michael Lee, who's out with that shoulder injury for Kansas, can really play in a role like this up and down game because he's a junior he's got experience and they really miss him that's part of the depth that's missing for kansas but even though when you look at that first half a 19 to 8 lead 13 to 4 run by kansas tcu didn't panic their speed their quickness their dribble penetration kansas could not match up to them defensively it allowed the threes to go off because the spacing was right and that's what's kept them in the game and they just believe that they can knock off number one like everybody else did last week yep the other teams have had success doing it we'll check on what bill self has to do as far as this halftime speech goes also ahead of us here some history in the sec on the football field we'll tell you what sylvester croom is up to and we'll get you kentucky's highlights wow Cats in action, we will return. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by the new Braun Free Glider. Braun, designed to make a difference. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball brought to you by Olympus and the Ultra Zoom, designed to get you 10 times closer, designed to do more. Back in Fort Worth, plenty to cheer about in the first half for TCU fans. The score was a bit ambiguous when we left you. It is 39-38 TCU. Here is why. Chidi Chinwizi, that last shot at the end of the first half off the miss. Chinwizi getting the rebound. And it was pretty clear in watching it live that he did get it off. But by rule, as you mentioned, Fran, the officials have to come check it out. And that is exactly what they did. Tommy O'Neill came by and yep. checked out our monitor. And, and it was quite evident that he had gotten it off. And Tommy O'Neill gave the single. And another cheer went up from this crowd here in Fort Worth as TCU down just one to the number one team of the nation. And a big part of the story in the first half has been the three-point shooting. Uh, both teams not known this year to be great outside shooting teams. But Kansas going 5 for 10, TCU 6 for 16. It really particularly gave TCU, I think, a lift at home. Those threes came up big, and it kept them hanging around. They've done a great job so far. And the big thing for Kansas is, despite the fact that they shot well from outside, they've only got six points among their three big guys. They only shot four free throws. This is a team that's come in averaging 23 free throw attempts a game. So look for Kansas early to establish an inside game. They shot well from just about everywhere, nearly 70% from the field in the first half. And they turn it over on the first possession. Lankford with the turnover. You mentioned those 11 threes between them. These two teams combined came in averaging just 10 points per game, three pointers per game total. So already exceeding their combined average in the first half. Well, remember, Kansas gets up and down the court quick, so they get a lot of layups in transition. And they've been very potent inside with Wayne Simeon. They've got to establish him early. Is that the biggest thing you would have talked about if you were Bill Self at halftime? Without a doubt, but they, but TCU came out right away, and Phoebe Ibikunle did not let the ball get inside. Santee, he has been red hot. Santee now with 16 points. And this is a guy that's averaged almost 16 points a game in his career here, so he's used to this. The freshman Padgett called for the walk. Well, and again, it was set up because Iba Kunle would not give Wayne Simeon a clear look at the lane. Pa Padgett couldn't throw it in there. 
See, Corey Santee has done this over his two and a half years at TCU. He's made some big shots, and he's got it. We talked early about him playing big tonight, and he has done that. Nucleus Smith has it blocked from behind by J.R. Giddens. Now Kansas has Giddens Watch out. out of the pack. Lays it in. Well, that's something J.R. Giddens can surely do is get out in transition. And now TCU turning it over. So Kansas going to get the ball right back. Corey Vaslin a little anxious to get it in. He stepped over the line. But again, Dave, when you only shoot four free throws in a half, it says something about your lack of aggressiveness inside. But credit TCU because they've done a nice job of keeping the ball out of the lane. And Kansas is by far the bigger team. So I mean, that's a real credit to the job TCU has done as Langford gets fouled off a set play on the inbounds. That's a great look. Langford, the, the man guarding Langford was not watching the basketball. Miles picked it up and he just threw it up. Now you'll watch, watch the TCU guys not even paying attention. And Langford, eye contact with Aaron Miles, a good smart play, gets the two free throws. Langford going to the line. And he hits the first one, 89% on the year, coming in eight points now. As Chin Weezy, who hit the big shot at the end of the first half, checks back in for the Horned Frogs. Well, and remember this, Dave, with Simeon and Langford in foul trouble. Simeon only played nine minutes that half. Langford only six. The blessing in disguise is that Bill Self was able to get a lot of young players on the court in a pretty important situation. That foul was on Falson. That is his second. He checked out of the game for TCU. This is Chinweezy backing in on Wayne Simeon, showing no fear. But it's a bit long. Maybe Kunle is very raw offensively. Nucleus Smith. Chin Weezy. They did a great job that time of using his shoulder to ward off Nash. When you're only 6'6 inside, you got to be tricky around the basket. That time, Nash had no chance to get to the ball because Chin Weezy used his whole body to shield him off. Chin Weezy having a great season early on. 13 of 16 from the field this year, including 3 of 5 in this game. Lakeford, the good hanger. He's blank for finding a way. He just needs a little bit of space in there. He has that ability to hang in the air. He gets to the rim about as well as anyone you're going to see in the country. And now an offensive foul against TCU. Well, Aaron Curtis pushed off Keith Langford. Keith Langford knew he was going to use the screen. He put himself in position to get through the screen. And Curtis just used two hands to shove him. First foul on Curtis. And the second team foul on the Horn Frogs. So the number one team of the nation in a dogfight here. 45-43, Kansas over TCU. This is a TCU team that did not even qualify for the Conference USA tournament last year. Kansas, four points away from winning a national championship. A great rhythm pull-up right there by J.R. Giddens. He got a little bit of space, and he's athletic enough to really elevate on a shot. Smooth release. Well, he got away with a travel. No, he didn't get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Higgins wouldn't let him get away with it. Well, again, we talked about this in parts of the first half. TCU should be excited that they're in the game, but they've got to slow down offensively and not try to hit doubles and triples and homers, but just hit singles right now. How well do you think they did that in the first half? In, in parts of the game, they did it really well in the first half. Remember, it was turnovers that kept them in the game. Now Nucleus Smith. Down. Nucleus Smith. It was a great look by Corey Santee off the rebound. Nucleus Smith leaked out early. 47-45. Again, the Horned Frogs within two. Langford. The great body control right there. We talked about just needing a little bit of space. Langford just needs a little bit of space to operate with. He's able to pull up in traffic. Already six points. 
in the second half for the Fort Worth native, and you saw some of the more than 50 friends and family cheering him on here. Eva Kunle having some problems underneath and leaves it short. Langford, he gets called for the walk. 16 turnovers now on the Jayhawks. TCU hanging around. Chin Weezy, Nucleus Smith, TCU, the Horned Frogs, flying high here in Fort Worth as they are within four. They're liking it in Fort Worth where TCU finds itself within four points of the number one team in the nation. 49-45, and a big reason for that, Fran Priscilla, the play of Corey Santee. Well, anytime you come in in an underdog dog situation like TCU finds itself in, you need excellent guard play. Corey Santee has had a great impact on this program. Billy Tubbs recruited him out of Flint, Michigan, and that's a town that's produced the likes of Trent Tucker, Jeff Grayer, the Flintstones up at Michigan State. So this guy has played against great competition for quite a while. I was talking to him yesterday, and he talked about playing with the team Cleves growing up and Morris Peterson. All the great players that yep. those Michigan State teams thrived on and continue to thrive on. Well, Michigan's got so many good players that Michigan and Michigan State can't keep all of them home. Here's one that's gotten away and is having a great career. Shropshire. Shot clock at six. Ball on the floor. And they're going to call a hell ball situation. So that's going to stay with the Horned Frogs. Well, Shropshire, although the clock was running down, they've only got two seconds now to get a shot off. You don't want to throw it to Marcus Sloan on the move at the foul line. What's their best play right here with two seconds? Well, they'll, they'll look lob to Smith, but they're going to have to do something, a quick screen catch and shoot. Chin Weezy, I don't think he's aware of their two seconds. He was not. He's got to know that. you got to have clock recognition right there. Neil Doherty probably told him, but he didn't tell him well enough. The communication broke down. He's just got to get a shot up on the rim. There you see Neil Doherty again in his second year here at TCU, trying to build the program. Seven years under Roy Williams at Kansas. He was also recruited by Mike Krzyzewski to play at Army. Played one year for Coach K before Krzyzewski left for Duke. And Doherty himself then left West Point. He said Krzyzewski was really the only reason he was there. Now the steal by Chin Weezy. Well, another turnover by Wayne Simeon. Chin Weezy has it stripped inside. Battle for the loose ball, and this one goes to TCU. Santee, the three. No good off back rim, and the Jayhawks do a good job clearing. That's J.R. Giddens. That was a good look at the basket that time. Langford thought about the three, and he gets fouled by Smith. TCU looks to throw it inside, but they don't have anybody that can really finish in there. It's really tempting when the defense is playing behind them. To throw it in, but they Sloan, Chinwizi really are not finishers yet. More energy players. So the first foul on Nucleus Smith. Three team fouls now on TCU in the half. Still none on the Jayhawks. Lankford. He hits the three-pointer. Lankford, who had two fouls in the first half, wasn't much of a factor, but a major factor here in the second half. Now is 16. Well, on TCU went zone the last two possessions. That time Lankford. Able to get right into that seam on the wing. Knock it down. And you see how out of control sometimes Shropshire can be. Sets up Santee there on the baseline. That time, great look, great decision. Corey Santee in rhythm, knocked it down. See, the longer this game goes where TCU can stay in the game, the tighter Kansas will be. They know they're number one in the country. They know that this is their first road game. It's going to be interesting to see how they react. 
It's interesting talking to Michael Lee today as Langford throws the alley-oop and J.R. Giddens throws it down. And that's the same play they ran in the first half. The fr this time, Keith Langford faked the jump shot. He purposely shot an air ball, and Giddens was in the right place to finish it. Uh, just to finish that thought, Michael Lee was saying he's not playing, as we told you, the broken collarbone. He said, I don't like being number one. We've got that big target on our back. So I'd rather just kind of hang around five or six. That's fine for me. Well, we talked about it early in the year. It means nothing. I want you to watch Keith Langford here if you can see it. He's going to shoot a jump shot. Giddens is in the bottom of your screen. He's going to shoot an air ball jump shot. Padgett with the great back screen on the backside forward. And Giddens is there for the easy two. Set up by a fake and a fake air ball. There you see the numbers for Langford again. He had the foul trouble in the first half. Two fouls and played sparingly for KU, but he's come on in the second half. And part of the reason the Jayhawks have extended the lead to seven. Chin Weezy. And it's going to stay with the Horned Frogs. You see Judy Chin Weezy and Femi Ebekunle. You like the way I said those? Yeah, that's impressive. You they, said that just to they, impress us. They you have no <laughs> point to make. You just wanted to say their names. But they both, right now, they're young players. They're not finishers inside. They play with energy, so when you throw it into them, you got to make sure they've got a good look at the basket. Chinweezy will get doubled every time he catches it. Shropshire. Good looking rebound. And going to the line now is the freshman Blake Adams. Adams snuck in along the baseline. No one blocked him out. And he was able to get inside of the defense. One thing good offensive rebounders do when a shot goes up, they get inside the defense and work their way from inside back out. There's no way, therefore, to block them out. Good heads-up play by the freshman. Adams misses the free throw. The first free throw attempt of his college career. Everything has to go right here the next four to six minutes for TCU, including making free throws. That's something TCU has not done very well this year as the Horned Frogs came in shooting just 53% from the line. Langford thinks about the three instead of great pass to Padgett. That was a great look for this Judy Chinweezy. Snuck out, tried to cheat out on Langford, left Padgett, and that left Padgett wide open. This will be a big possession right here, Dave, for TCU. Trying to hang around against the nation's number one team. The first time a number one team has ever come into Daniel Meyer Coliseum. The TCU right now, you don't want to have a letdown and be satisfied that you played a good first half. Going to call a push down low on the Horned Frogs. If you were Neil Doherty, and I know you've got a TV timeout coming, but would you call a timeout anyway? I would always take a timeout, regardless of the TV timeout, to, to, to stem somebody's momentum. I wouldn't mind calling a timeout if I felt the game was getting away from me, because you don't want to wait for the TV timeout and be six points more down. On nine now, you don't want to be down 15 and say, oh, well, we might as well use one. Wayne Simeon going to the line, 16 of 16 from the stripe so far this year, and Simeon Makes it 17 of 17, three points now for him. You see a couple subs now for TCU, including Valson coming back into the game, along with our Pierce. Well, this is something Neil Doherty can certainly, certainly build on, but you don't want to be, when you're building a program and you're teaching players how to win, you don't want to be satisfied by just hanging around. You don't get this opportunity to beat number one that often. Well, it's slipping away just a bit right now, and one of the reasons it's slipping away is a guy who got away from Fort Worth, Keith Lankford, getting the family going as Kansas has the lead up to 11. Back at Fort Worth, Dave Reps and Fran for Schiller, Kansas on an 11-2 run over the last five minutes, and it's a local kid who has been the difference, Fran. Remember, they call Keith Langford Mr. March and Lawrence because he plays big in the tournament.
Trouble early, but he's played big here in the second half. Able to nice knife his way in traffic, scoring, and then the deft touch. No, this was not a jump shot. That was a big air ball pass, and then a great dish to pack it inside. So far, a very nice homecoming. When you score 16 points, you only take seven shots. That's pretty proficient. Keith Blank for two of three behind the arc, as we told you. That is kind of the one knock against him, the three-point shooting. But he's yeah. even doing that well tonight. Well, you talked to some NBA scouts who mentioned that to you. And you know what? He's never had to shoot the three here at Kansas. You play with Miles and Heinrich for two years, you're going to get transition baskets. I guarantee you he can improve that range and become a good, solid outside shooter. Dropshire inside of Pierce can't get it to go, but he gets tipped in by Blake Adams. Well, Kansas came out, tried to double team off the dribble, and that created a rotation problem. Good finish on the backside by the Horn Frogs. Lead back down to nine. Simeon, the three pointer. That's no good. Great hustle, though. Miles on the glass, no. Simeon again. Can't get it to go. Kansas dominating the glass, but unable to convert. Well, great effort by TCU to just to keep that ball alive. Simeon missed the jump shot. And then the bunny inside. He can shoot that shot. He does a good job of following up the rebound. Doesn't finish, but a great effort by TCU as well. 20 on the shot clock for TCU. Shropshire. Now Valson. That is not his shot. He shot two air balls on Saturday night against, T against Tulsa. Corey Valson is an inside player. Doesn't need to take that shot. And a foul away from the ball, going to go against the Horned Frogs. That's on Santee, his second. And you talked about him. There's Neil Doherty, and you see him obviously in a little bit of emotional pain right there. But that was one of the shots, the kind of shots we were talking about. They said this team just can't take. No, especially that early in the shot clock. And again, you want players to play with confidence. But you can get that shot 15 seconds later. Oh. Hawkins missing. Kansas really asserting itself on the glass, and Lankford hits. Well, we keep repeating that when you're a scorer, you find different ways to score. Keith Lankford in the second half has shown us a variety of ways, that time off an offensive rebound. Now a little bit out of control, perhaps, Pierce, but he does draw the foul. And Pierce was able to get by Padgett. Padgett pushed off. Langford was in position to take the charge, but before he could get there, Padgett fouled. He's Langford quick off his feet. You see, he sneaks inside and then is able to just get it off the glass and finish. Second foul on David Padgett. Just the third team foul on Kansas in the half. Again, the Jayhawks up by 11. It's just a one-point game at the break. TCU needs a mini run here, Dave. A four, six-point run. That's going to help Aaron Miles committing his second foul. One of the things that's really helped KU, though, is all the guys who came into the second half with two fouls still have two fouls. Langford, Simeon, Hawkins, none of these guys have gotten any additional fouls here in the second half, Fred. Bill Self hasn't had to go to the young players to rely on as much with Langford, Miles, Simeon on the floor now in this half. Remember, this is the first game for Kansas without Michael Lee out six to eight weeks with a broken collarbone. Jim Reese gets it to go. Iba Kumle, and he draws the foul. That's what you want out of your big men if you're Neil Doherty. They're not proficient offensive players yet, so what you want them to do is just have their hands ready off the great penetration by Santi. Just be able to catch it, gather, finish, draw the contact, and make the basket. Ball goes against David Padgett, number three on him, so they bring in Graves. You don't lose a whole lot when you go to Graves. No, not at all. Jeff Graves is a guy that sometimes gets himself out of shape, but to have him come off the bench is a great luxury for the Jayhawks. Iba Kumle converts on the three-point play. A guy who's from Lagos, Nigeria, 
by way of New Hampton Prep in New Hampshire. So a 60-52 game. There's a zone. Hawkins, zone buster. Great skip pass. The ball moves quicker than the defense. They found Hawkins on the weak side. A career day for Jeff Hawkins. Santee on the other end. Santee was able to change speeds. It took Kansas by surprise. No one rotated over. He was able to get right to the rim. Again, you see the 2-3 zone. Miles for three. Way off the mark. That was Henry not Butler. a set play. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the alley-oop, huh? Adams miss. And then the foul. Looks like it's going to go against Steven Kunle. I'll tell you what, Adams could have brought down the house with that one. Well, that's what you need right there. It's a good-looking transition, but you got to knock that down. And again, when you don't have inside scoring, you've got to get open perimeter shots. And if they come off transitions, sometimes you have to live with that. That one actually went against Chinweezy. Both he and Ibakunle were there. Chinweezy gets called for it, so that's his first. Again, you're down nine if you're TCU. You just want to hang around. A four, six-point run. And then Kansas hopefully tightens up a little bit. But on the, on the flip side, Dave, this is a great experience for Kansas. Bill Self's first road game. Hostile environment. Braves out top right around Eva Kunle. Drops it down low. And they call the hell ball. So that one's going to go to Kansas. You talk about it being a great experience for Kansas. It seems to me that both of these coaches can use this as a real teaching tool. I mean, Kansas in a heated game right. against a, an underdog opponent. But for TCU, I mean, Neil Doherty, you got to say, look, we can hang around with the number one team in the country. There's no doubt about it. They played Saturday night against a good Tulsa team. There were only 3,000 people in here. The energy of this building tonight has given TCU a big lift. But they've got to use this experience to keep getting better. Right. He is tough. You notice he's always under control. He only takes the ball as far as he needs to. He very rarely gets himself in trouble in terms of defenders sliding under him. 20 points now for Keith Langford. 13 in the second half. Here comes Hawkins. And Hawkins going to slow things up. He has 10. Hawkins, a guy who's really struggled early in his career. In fact, he said he's been watching videos of his high school career just to remind himself of how good he can be. Having a career night tonight, 13 points. He has nearly doubled his career high. That foul goes against Graves, his second. Now, Hawkins is a guy they're really going to need, too. Obviously, with the injury situation right now to Michael Lee. So, Jeff Hawkins pouring it on. Keith Langford as well as Kansas extends the lead to 14. We are back in Fort Worth, Texas. Number one, Kansas up by 14 on TCU. It was just a one-point game at the half. But Kansas extending the lead here in the second half. And as we take a look at our game track, a huge part of that, Fran Fraschilla, is the play of the local hero, Keith Langford. Well, and also Kansas shooting 8 of 17 a second half from three. Remember, they only have four turnovers this half after 13 in the first half. So when you shoot 64% from the field and 47 from three, you were going to put points on the board. They didn't do that as well in the first half. Too many turnovers. So a 14-point lead for the Jayhawks. And if you're TCU right now, you just want to get it under 10, maybe to 8. Now, you talked a lot after the half about them trying to pound it inside. They really haven't done that in the second half. Shropshire missing the three. How surprised are you by that? Well, I think TCU has really done a nice job defensively keeping the ball out of the lane. Oh, well, here they get it inside. Every, but you notice every time they throw it in there, there's two and three TCU defenders running towards Graves or Simeon. And that's really where the bulk of the turnovers has come tonight. So credit TCU for keeping it out of there, but credit the Jayhawks for knocking down big jump shots. 
And that was something Neil Doherty said yesterday. He said, we're going to have to make a trade-off here. We can't extend the defense because we're not good enough to close those holes inside. We'll take our chances with them on the outside. And obviously, Kansas has answered that challenge. And I think he said they have to pick their poison. They've chosen to give up the jump shot, but KU has knocked them down. Now, Hawkins tried to knock down another one, and he is really coming of age. I'll tell you what, when you got Michael Lee out for six to eight weeks, the freshmen are going to be up and down because they're freshmen. Jeff Hawkins has been big tonight. 16 points now for Jeff Hawkins. That is 10 more than his career high coming in. Chin Weezy. Double team gets it off. And Nucleus Smith is going to go to the strike. Don't forget the MAC championship game comes your way on ESPN2 on Thursday. What a great matchup this is. 7 p.m. Eastern time, number 15 Miami of Ohio against number 23 Bowling Green. Great quarterback showdown. Ben Roethlisberger, who you see pictured there, against a guy you may not know a whole lot about, but it's really worth watching. Josh Harris, incredible dual threat quarterback for Bowling Green. That is going to be a fun game, and it has been a great year for the Mid-American Conference. Well, I'll tell you, Northern Illinois with a great season under Joe Novak. I'm really excited about seeing Josh Harris. He not only can throw the ball, but he's really quick on his feet, too. He, he is. They have some great quarterbacks in the MAC. I mean, those two, Charlie Fry and Akron, has yep. been tremendous this year. Young man at Toledo who just had a big game. Yeah, Gradkowski, yep. Bruce Gradkowski. There's a... A plethora of good quarterbacks in the Mid-America Conference. A lot of good teams now. Not only a plethora, but there's a lot of them, too. <laughs> On top of that. Now Nucleus Smith off the miss. Spinning. And hit oh, Street ball. Good job by Nucleus Smith. Good body control. Able to take it all the way. You just watch the spin. Draws the contact. And is able to hang just long enough in the air to finish. So it's a 14-point game pending the free throws. Kansas trying to hang on here in Fort Worth. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball. Brought to you by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Back at Fort Worth, Texas, it is Kansas on top of TCU, 71 to 57. The Jayhawks doing it without Michael Lee as a broken collarbone. Out six to eight weeks, he is one of their starters. Started the first two games, a 45 percent career three-point shooter. This is a team that struggles from behind the arc, but they haven't struggled today. And a big part of the reason why is the play of that guy, Jeff Hawkins. Well, Jeff Hawkins came in 0 for three on the season, seven and a half minutes a game in his first two games, but. Michael Lee going down opens up a great opportunity not only for those freshmen Jeremy Case J.R. Giddens but also a guy who's been here for two years now and Jeff Hawkins has responded tonight. That was a bit prescient I think but uh, Michael Lee said today when I talked to him he said I think the guy that's going to benefit the most from me being out is Jeff Hawkins. He okay. said he's a guy he spoke a lot about his defense and said he's really underrated as a defender but Hawkins has stepped up offensively as well. Tell you what's important about Jeff Hawkins stepping up is they really didn't have a backup point guard to Aaron Miles. They, Bill Self played Michael Lee at the point guard spot against Michigan State, but Jeff Hawkins is more of a true point guard, so this will give him minutes on the floor. It'll make him better. Michael Lee is going to come back, fulfill his role when he's healthy, and hopefully some of those freshmen will get some time as well and continue to develop. Yeah, one of the things that Bill Self said is, in truth, Assuming Michael Lee comes back healthy as Nucleus Smith misses the jumper there. Assuming he comes back healthy, he said, I think we could be a better team because of this injury in the long run. Well, that usually happens because you have to change roles. More people have to step up and grow. And that I, I think that's exactly going to happen. It certainly has paid off tonight for Jeff Hawkins. Well, J.R. Giddens now goes into the starting lineup. He's obviously a young man with a lot of ability. He slides comfortably into that small forward slot. You got a terrific backcourt in Miles and Langford. So here is Keith Langford at the line. 
trying to add to his 20 points, and he does so. And don't forget the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues tomorrow on ESPN at 7. It's Indiana and Bracey Wright against number 16, Wake Forest. Very balanced Wake Forest team. Then number 11, Illinois against number 10, North Carolina. Self's old team against Roy's new team. Should be an intriguing one. Well, Bracey Wright looks like he's fully recovered from that back injury last year. Terrific game against Xavier on Saturday. Needs a little help, though, not a ton of balance on that Indiana team this year. And George Leach, good inside player, is out indefinitely. See, even though TCU doesn't have scoring inside, Kansas still traps the post, makes it difficult for, for TCU to throw it back out. And if you're Neil Doherty right now, you just want to continue to hang around. You can draw a lot from this game, but you still want to continue to coach and try to cut this lead, get it under 10. Right now it's at 15. Jayhawks obviously in no hurry. We got a foul. It's going to go against Valson. Well, it looked like Wayne Simeon set a moving screen, but the reason he was moving, he had a little help from Corey Valson. And, it, and it's really interesting, Dave. There are some similarities to Roy Williams' system and Bill Self's, but the, the offense, particularly the motion offense, it's more of a high-low offense that Bill Self employs, and that's going to be a little bit of an adjustment. These guys have been to two Final Fours under Roy Williams and the Kansas system, and now there's a new Kansas system. It's the Bill Self way, and that'll take a little bit of, of a time to adjust. Speaking of the Kansas system, Neil Doherty running that and running it quite well here at TCU. Well, you know, they run the secondary break, and when I was a young coach, we called it the Carolina break because Dean Smith employed it. Roy Williams took it to Kansas. They ran it so well, people started to call it the Kansas break. Now that Roy's back at Carolina, I guess we can go back and call it the <laughs> Carolina break. It can really confuse people at a coaching clinic. Uh, Neil We'll know he's arrived when it becomes the TCU break. That's exactly right. Right now, his team down by 17. They have fought valiantly in this game. Again, down by one at the half. But Kansas is pulled away here in the second half. See the double team coming. Nice feed right there from Eva Kublai to Nucleus Smith. And he's going to go to the stripe to try to convert on the three-point play. One thing Femi did, he got rid of the ball before the double team could come. The rotation was slow, and that allowed him, you'll see now, here comes the double team from the weak side. The double never gets there, and that leaves Nucleus Smith open on the side. When you come and double the post, especially with another big man, you've got to get there quickly, otherwise you're going to leave someone open at the backside of the basket. Good recognition by the freshman, Eva Kunle. You can see why he was very highly recruited. In fact, a lot of people thought he was headed for Marquette. He committed to TCU after the Final Four last year, so that's a pretty good get when you consider Marquette was coming off the Final Four appearance. Hawkins. Wow. Holy cow. This is a great night for Jeff Hawkins. You remember, he came in with no three-pointers on the season, and now he's got five. Has now more than tripled his career high. <laughs> Shropshire. Shropshire can get it going. That time a good wide open look. A little too much space. Some contact underneath. And it looks like they got the freshman Art Pierce. Well, they have done collectively, TCU, a very, very good job tonight on Wayne Simeon. That time a little too much contact, but they have done a great job of keeping the ball out of the lane. That's been a big reason why Kansas has turned the ball over a little bit more than Bill Self would like. There you see Simeon 20 of 20 from the stripe so far this year. Simeon, avid fisherman. <laughs> As we jinxed him there, he misses that one. Remember, he had 28 against Michigan State. He's got a headband on the floor. Simeon was 
told me earlier today about his fishing. He said he hooked a big one this summer. And we'll tell you a little bit more about this one. It's a, it's a funny, we got a big fish story when we come back. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be good. 78-64, Kansas on top of TCU. Going to sold out Daniel Meyer Coliseum in Fort Worth, Kansas, on top 78 to 64 as we celebrate our 25 seasons of college basketball. Time to flash back into the ESPN archives. Maybe the best game that Nick Collison has ever had in a Kansas uniform, and that is saying something. Look at Collison run on the floor. This is the shot, but Collison with the rebound and the putback, he's already got a double double. What a phenomenal performance by Collison. He doesn't want to leave, man. He's had such a great game. He's not want to leave. He's a guy's winning for me. Great performance, son. I mean, that was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, standing go from Dickie V right there as you see Danny Manning. Collison joined him by having his number retired earlier this week. Danny Manning has returned to KU, the director of student athlete development and team manager. Not a bad practice player. Friend. I bet he is the best playing director of student athlete development in America. He's <laughs> great at the noon pickup games in Allen Fieldhouse. Danny's really a class guy. Maybe, maybe the best player to ever put on a Kansas uniform. Make the argument for Wilt Chamberlain, but Danny Manning, 1988. That was a great reunion at uh, late night at the Fog. Bill Self brought everybody back from the 88 team, including Larry Brown. Graves hits and gets fouled. Uh, you want your point guard to get into the lane and draw more than one defender. You see Ibukunle steps up and that frees Graves the basket. When you help on defense, never help up. Help across. When you come up, you take yourself out of position. But the play was made by good point guard recognition by Aaron Miles. That's something Aaron Miles is known for. He is on pace to obliterate Jock Vaughn's career assist mark at Kansas. So the lead is 17. The miss by Nucleus Smith and Kansas coming the other way. And you know what? I want to point out, Dave, Neil Doherty has done a nice job tonight with this TCU team. But remember, Aaron Miles and Simeon and Langford, they all are still very close to their former assistant coach. He had a lot to do with those guys being Jayhawks. And Jayhawks are more than just one coach. That tradition is more than just one coach and one player. It's a tr tradition that spans over 100 years going back to James Naismith. Amazingly, he's just the eighth coach in Kansas history, Bill South. And you mentioned James Naismith, the first and the only one <laughs> Without a winning record, as we look at Simeon, we were talking about that, the big fish story. Simeon was telling me, was in a boat, caught a fish, was trying to reel it in, it capsized. He said he ended up in mud up to a, about his knees. He said he had to ditch his shoes, so he said there's a turtle walking around right now with a great pair of Jordans. He was real bummed out. And that was the same time that Bill Self had a minor heart attack when he found out about the boat capsizing. <laughs> As there you take a look at Simeon's parents. Well, I heard the story when we were, I, I talked to the KU staff this week, and Joe Dooley, who's a former assistant mine in New Mexico and now at KU, he said that the guy Wayne Simeon fears most is his dad. He said he's really done a great job of, uh, of raising him, and he's a quality guy. They call him Big Dub. Big Dub for W, Wayne. I was out there for, for practice the first few days, and they were calling him Dub. I couldn't understand why. Big Dub. He hadn't necessarily needed to be big tonight. Well, you saw Hawkins, one of the smallest guys on the floor, who came up big. Just 5'11", ended up with 19 points in this game as he has just checked out for Kansas. Well, Simeon grew up in Leavenworth, Kansas, and... Of course, that's known for, among other things, the federal penitentiary that's there. It's also the hometown of Neil Doherty as Keith Langford hits the three. And Simeon said when you grow up in the shadow of that place, you have a very good idea what not to do in life. Well, you know who else is from Leavenworth, Kansas? Here's Doherty. Yeah, yeah, the two of them, both of them. Eva Kunle gets fouled underneath. Foul number 42, Jeff Graves. 
going to go against Jeff Graves. Well, Bill Self will be number one in the Jayhawks at least till Saturday when they when they go to Stanford. They actually go out to the pond in Anaheim. I don't know if Josh Childress, Stanford star forward, will play. But Stanford has a very, very good team out on the West Coast this year. Chris Hernandez is healthy. Great point guard. If you didn't like the guys who were on the floor, you've got 10 new ones. There goes Keith Langford coming off to a huge ovation, 25 points, as there you see his mom, Charlene Taylor, again, his first basketball coach, as we told you off the top, and there the hug for his former coach, Neil Doherty. Well, that's, a, that's really a great moment. Neil Doherty, we sat with him yesterday, and, you know, I have never sat in an interview with a coach where someone was moved to tears like he was, talking about his former high school coach, Roy Williams, the guys here that he left behind at KU. And there were glimpses tonight of TCU basketball being back on track, particularly with this great crowd. Uh, he talked a lot about he needs to sell this community on TCU. He made, he's made young kids TCU fans. And That's I think right. anyone who was here and watched this first half certainly would come away as a TCU fan. You can be spoiled being a Jayhawk because of a great basketball tradition. That's something he's trying to build here in Fort Worth. But this has been a good showing. Well, he admitted, he said, I'm as spoiled as anyone. But he told the people at TCU, you can be spoiled, too. I'll show you how to be spoiled. Just buy into my system. NBA fast break coming up next. David Aldridge, Matt Weiner run down the night's games. We'll also have a nice feature on comebacks with Antonio McDice. Yep. Playing for the Knicks tonight. Knicks lost in overtime, but it's great to see Antonio back. He's worked a long time. He's been out over a year. All the walk-ons on the floor here. We also have Omar Wilkes in there, number two, son of Jamal Wilkes for Kansas, one of their highly touted freshmen. This is Vincent ahead of the pack, and Vincent, the walk-on from Lawrence, Kansas, gets the lay-in. As the two coaches exchange pleasantries, a very closely contested game for a half friend. What do you make from this in uh, the final analysis? Well, you know, it was a hard game, I think, for both coaches. You're talking about Bill Self, replacing the Hall of Fame coach and Roy Williams, but that's the usual at Kansas. Neil Doherty very close to a lot of these Kansas players, and it, and it was a difficult night for both coaches, but we saw why Kansas in the second half was number one, Dave. 85-66, our final coming up next, NBA Fast Break. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night from Fort Worth.